We had some terrific performers in the film. And one thing that was consistent across all of them, Margot Kidder, Barry Corbin, Larry Thomas, Rance Howard, um, John Grice, none of them are Mormon. But they all read the script and they all found something in it that they strongly believed in. It was a film that involved 140 film students from BYU. And of course it was happening here in Utah and here I am from Linden. But these uh, performers across the board read it and said, this is something that I want to be able to say. This is something I want to participate in, something I believe in. So you have among that group of actors, uh, people who believed in what we were saying. Uh, to the point that they took less money than they deserve to be in the movie and contribute to that, uh, that statement, which I hope is very, very positive. Barry Corbin, whose uh, first, first take on one of the most difficult speeches in the film, took my breath away. I read the story, I read it uh, two or three times, and then and I thought, well, this is, this is very interesting, and uh, the third time I read it, I liked it a whole lot better. So it's, uh, that, that's a test of a good script. I read a script for the story first, and then I read it to see where my character fits in the story. And then I read it to break down my character's motivations, movements. For my money, a very good script. And I think, uh, I think they're doing a very good job with it, too. They've got a wonderful cast wonderful crew and from what I've uh, from what little bit I've seen of it it's a beautifully shot movie so I'm uh, I'm optimistic we have something pretty good uh, John Grice who um, he's funny so he gets a lot of comedy because he is funny he has impeccable timing great ideas the little misfire totally John Grice not me he said what if I'm looking at it and then and it's one of the best moments in the movie and it's just <laughs> He, he does things like Piece that. Of garbage. Anything that Jared Hess, who directed and wrote Napoleon Dynamite, and of course we have a history because we worked together in that film, anything he calls me about, I'm going to give a really, really good hard look to. Right off when Tom and I spoke on the phone, before I even had the script, I liked him right away. I was like, ah, this guy gets it. He's a good guy. I, I, I really like his energy. I, I, it's just, it's right, you know? When I read the script, it was the seal to the deal, you know, because, you know, the, the story in the script has such an, an amazing heart. You, you know, it's a genre piece, but it has an amazing heart to it and, and, uh, and, and really well handled. That, it's like a nice stroke of the brush, and it really, it really comes across in the script. When I got the script and read it, I went, this is a really stellar script. This is, first of all, the character's wonderful, but more importantly, this level of writing you see very, very, very rarely. And the ultimate notion that all human beings, whatever their quirks, are worthy of love and redemption. And I, uh, I, I found it very difficult to get out of my head. Katrine McGregor, who's this wonderful casting director, and she starts bringing out these names. Well, I've worked with this person, this person. I'll, I'll just give them a call. So we end up with this remarkable uh, Margot Kidder, who, when she showed up, and we did our first scene, I thought, sometimes as a director you think, now wait a second, that's, that's not the right direction to go. Because also when you write it, you have a very specific thing in your head. So uh, Margie did her first scene, and I thought, oh, that's different than I had pictured this. But not lethally so, not where I thought, oh no, she's changing it and, and uh, it's going to go in the wrong direction. So I waited and we did another scene and then uh, Ms. Kidder's genius started to emerge of what she had prepared for. This thoroughly prepared actor who came in and by the end of her performance I thought I never would have seen that uh, complexity in Marlis's character. And I wouldn't have seen the humanity in it. Margie, who has been through her own set of life challenges and, and emerged so triumphantly, you know. So by the end, I just thought, this is one of my... I loved the character anyway, but she added a depth and humanity to Marlis that then strengthened our compassion for Jean-Baptiste, for John Freeman. When John Freeman started interacting with her, John Freeman, who is a relationship actor, he has somebody there, and once that person is there, he focuses on that relationship. And he becomes Henry Heath.
He just has this silent strength in what he does, this determination. Here's right and here's wrong. And when that gray kind of comes in where he thinks, where, how do I act here? What is right now? He wants to do right, but he has to find out what it is. And um, that's where his challenge lies. The way I approached Henry Heath was, was, was I read the script. There's an amazing amount in the script. He's an amazing character with all these layers. And then I had questions, you know, where did he come from? Where was he born? That kind of thing. And then pow, in, in the email comes a three-page backstory on Henry Heath before the movie picks up that will probably be a prequel. They're going to shoot it because just the backstory on Henry Heath was amazing. The guy's been through a lot. And, you know, in a, at a time when life was incredibly tough for everybody, he had a pretty tough go of it himself. Making the movie, I've learned, is not Henry Heath's journey, it's Marlis's journey with Margot, and it's, it's the judge's journey. And, and really, the person who teaches Heath maybe the most in the movie is Jean Baptiste. What David brought and everything is just makes it where I learn, well, but Lucille says it, you know, how we treat people like that says more about ourselves than it does them, and it's that kind of thing. Uh, Heath and I both learned a lot from the other characters in the movie. David Stevens, who's from another world of brilliance in my mind, he, he's so remarkably focused and so utterly committed. You know, and David is, David is method. And he, he doesn't separate himself from those anxieties and those concerns, and it's, which is uh, why his performance is so magnificent, why he's so good. To approach Jean Baptiste, um, yeah, he's a, he's a complex character, but I personally had to play him the simple man, you know? A simple man who both justified what he did to a certain degree, knowing it was wrong, and that he just loved his wife and loved his job, as odd as it was. And, and and just wanted to, to get by, you know. The scene the scene where Barry Corbin delivers as the judge what's coming for Jean Baptiste. Uh, my my feeling was that I was going to play it resigned. He knew he knew that he had been caught. He knew he was in trouble and just willing to accept what what comes. And I sat down and Barry Corbin sat down and he looked at me. And all of a sudden, I felt myself starting to freak out. And as he continued to look at me and read this and tell me what was coming, by the end of the scene, you see me start to freak out. And that's another, you know, another wonderful reason why you want to work with professionals. Someone like Barry, someone like, you know, uh, Margot Kidder, they bring things out of you that you never knew was coming. And so, and, and then our, our Robin, our Lucille, time after time after time, just brought this character to life in a powerful way. We didn't want the typical kind of, you know, the, this, is, this is the female lead. We wanted somebody that looked like they'd had some life experience, and Robin has, and she brought it to the role. Rance Howard, you talk about life experience and an individual who is a, a beautifully trained actor, who so graciously says, I'll take this role. He could have played uh, the governor, he could have played the doctor, he would have played them impeccably. But he had a compassion that when he talked to that family and to that child, it, it it just, he practically undid me when I watched him do that. And here he shows up and in, you know, I don't know how many short minutes of screen time, he's unforgettable.